Well, yesterday was a lot of fun. We both got to be right there at Parliament in the House of Lords. Uh, you flew in all the way from Dubai. Thank you for making the trek mm -hmm. to be Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad that I invited you. I've just been so fascinated by the success of ArtsDAO. So can you give me, and of course there might be people that see our conversation, but can you give me a little background on yourself, your two co-founders, and what is ArtsDAO, and how would people find out a bit about it? And then we'll talk a bit about what you guys have accomplished. Cool. Um, well, I used to be an artist for the last couple of years. 3D artist? Uh, like a 3D artist, right. uh, filmmaking, uh, cinematography, things like that. I got into NFTs early last year. Yeah. And um, I got like super lucky because I was in the right place at the right time when the whole Beeple movement happened. Right. Um, and stuff. So I got like super lucky with like art blocks, the board apes, and things like that. Yes. A um, couple of months later, I ended up meeting someone in Dubai through a bid war. Yeah, um, and that was the first person I met in real life who was into NFT. So we kind of like got talking, and we kind of hit it off, and like we decided to do like small meetups. Right. And we did like a small meetup in an art gallery of like 15 people, and then we did the next one. There were like 30 people, and then it just like started scaling. So me and the other two co-founders, we started talking about that Dubai has been like such a great hub always for like social events yeah. and like we were seeing the same people come over and over again because mm -hmm. they were like we love this right there's our friends and family think we are crazy but this is a place <laughs> where we feel we belong and yeah. they started bringing their spouses and people who weren't into nfts right and that's when we were like okay like there's clearly something over here yeah and we need to build out of this this beautiful hive mind that mm -hmm. we are creating because there were developers, there were investors, there were right. artists, and I think that's where the birth of like ArtsDAO actually came from. Now, ArtsDAO has 1,500 NFTs. You're on OpenSea. Uh, there's 640 members, and basically you brought it to market, and if people acquire an ArtsDAO NFT, from what I understand in our previous conversations is they are a fractional owner over blue chip NFTs, things like a Moonbird, and a CryptoPunk, and a Bored Ape, and art blocks and others. In addition, they also get free access to all of your private events where all of the drinks and the appetizers and the party vibes are provided, right? Absolutely. Um, so can you tell me a bit about what was the vision for ArtsDAO when you said, let's formalize this? Like the three of us, let's get together and let's launch this. Because I know that eventually the Jedi Council was formed with 18 yes. kind of decision influencers that have a six month role. So give me an idea. You say, let's take this to market. And then what happens from then until now? And then we'll talk a bit about the future. Cool. W well, when we came up with this idea of creating a DAO, we were studying other DAOs. So you had like Flingamo Flamingo DAO, Ultra DAOs, and things like that. They were at a smaller scale. They yeah. were like 100 people big. And we were trying to make a bigger one. Yeah. So we were like, you know, like, how do we go about it? Initially, we had this idea of everyone kind of voting yeah, within the DAO, all the members yeah. for the 1500 NFTs. But then that kind of went against the what we were trying to build is basically building this this access to fractional ownership to NFTs for people who've never been into NFTs. Right. Someone who doesn't know whether Board Ape is a good buy or not will not be able to mm. vote on it. So then we kind of came up with this idea that, oh, what if we have a council of like people who really understand this space? Right. And we got like a a plethora of different people. So mm -hmm. we had artists, we have, we have people who are into game five, people who invested into like, like uh, seed invested into like certain projects and stuff. So we were like, you know, like let's kind of build from that so that we can kind of create the best product and kind of here and there uh, test a snapshot vote. So for example, one of the times we actually included all the members yeah. was um, when the proof grails came out. Right. Yeah, we kind of involved the entire community mm -hmm. because we were like, we obviously over time want to turn this into a, like a full fledged DAO, yeah. but that will only come with time considering we have the same issues with DAOs that are in political system, right? right. People don't know what to vote on and some people just don't show up. Right. So we're kind of doing the whole these whole events and bringing people together, making them realize yeah. that what we are trying to build and that their expertise or their vision is just as important mm -hmm. will hopefully get us to form this DAO that's not just great for us, but it becomes a case study yeah. for other DAOs right. and other DAOs in the Middle East that people can be like, okay, like Arts DAO did this, right. let's do it better. Right. We want them to do it better and stuff, right? So that's, yeah. that's how the vision came up. Where do things go from here? So you have you launched, you've accomplished a number of things. You have this vibrant community. I know that you and your team and I have had conversations about like, 
what could be with an NFT DXB in the future, you know, tossed ideas around next year, 2023, whether that's spring, summer, who, who knows kind of how that'll land. Um, there's been more of an appetite, it seems like, for a festival type vibe than like a conference exactly, type vibe, exactly. right? So uh, where, where do things go from here? Like, what, how's this year close out? What are you looking forward to for your community going into 2023? Uh, well, I think like going back to earlier what we were speaking about, that Dubai has become like a very big hub for NFTs and crypto. Like the Dubai government has a metaverse council. Right. Right. So like when, when the government's getting involved, you're seeing a lot of innovation mm. and tech and projects and art come out of out of this space. Yeah. So we definitely want to be at the forefront of doing a big scaled event. Yes. And the reason for that is not necessarily we just want it for egoistic reasons is because we know that we want we will be able to do it right for yeah. the community like art style has always been about the community right. it's always been about the events connecting the right people with the right people yeah and i feel like we want to do this on a bigger scale so that we can see more innovation come out of the region yeah we don't want to be like you know i think web3 is about like all of us being equal all right. of us having equal opportunities and we want to make sure that the ethos of web3 stay that way that's good. And i feel like that's what we are looking at we have events in dubai happening almost on a daily basis yes um, a lot of these events are their nft and crypto events but neither of the people who are managing or speaking don't mm -hmm. really know about all of this so right. we want to kind of like help people pivot into how the space actually works yes and like the reason we took the whole festival route as well that we believe nfts are a lot about culture yeah. i think this is the first time in a very long time we are seeing investing and in understanding um, asset management has become interesting yes. to younger people right all of a sudden like if you're a gamer who games like five days a week that your your hard work of buying that weapon and being able mm. to sell it online has become an asset. Yes. And I feel like we really want to bring the culture element to it, which is right. where the whole festival idea came from. And stuff. How about being here at NFT London? You're here till the end of the weekend, yes. right? You head back to Dubai. Um, what are you hopeful for? Like, who do you want to meet? Who do you want to talk to? What do you want to learn? Uh, you know, you've made this massive uh, time and financial investment to fly out here, to get a ticket, uh, to come early so you could be with me at the House of Lords event yesterday, spending time together right now. Uh, obviously, most of our conversation was private. Uh, you're welcome for sharing something, right? Uh, so, but what are you hopeful for this week? Uh, well, I want to definitely sh educate people and show what the rest of the world is also kind of building in this space. Yeah. Um, we've always heard people view Dubai as like the most amazing tourist destination. Mm. But there's a lot of innovation and tech that's coming out. To find out that the government is working on having Web3 and Metaverse part of whatever they're building, and not them just building, assuming that what they are thinking is right, but actually going to the right people and asking if this is how they should do it, is more of a pivotal thing than we realize. Mm. And I want, A, I want these other people to realize that. Yeah. And B, that I want to I want to learn from other people. Like right. London has always been a, a city of culture mm. with, with, with their um, art, obviously, theater Absolutely. and things like that. And I feel like a city like this understands culture. You have like so many cool builders and investors right. coming in in this space. Yes. It's great to, Web3 is about learning and educating. Yes. So I feel like kind of building that both ways. Mm. I've been lucky enough to meet some like really important people who will hopefully be part of NFT DXB and stuff. So it's been awesome meeting everyone from uh, with NFT London and its uh, platform. Well, before we wrap, talk to me more about our event yesterday. So, you know, my intention was to bring you and me and a few dozen of our peers together, right? I wanted to fill the room with, you know, maybe three dozen or so uh, global leaders, right? People that are actually building this globally. <laughs> And that was achieved. I had a few dozen of the most important global leaders fly in from around the world so we could spend time together at the House of Lords. Uh, and then the local community found out about it. And while I was flying <laughs> from America to London, I had like 100 people join the waiting list. And I care about people, right? So I thought, well, I should at least look through. And so I did allow more than half of the waiting list to come, as many people as we could possibly fit. Uh, and it's hard to judge, like, are we, letting the right people come in or not. But 
I was very busy at the event. I think I did like 50 little micro interviews. I tried to take a picture with everybody, try to shake everybody's hand, to welcome, welcome them. Uh, you and I had a moment, but really it was you kind of floating around the room and you were talking like even outside waiting to come in was one of the great experiences. So can you talk a bit about your experience and why should people be thoughtful of putting together small groups of uh, extraordinary leaders together? Like, should I do that again? Why should I do that again? What's the experience that you had in, in it? Uh, no, that's a very great thing that you're asking. I feel like we all need to realize, and I say this quite often, that if you're into Web3 and NFTs right now, whether you realize it or not, you are pioneering this space. That's right. Every time, you, I had a conversation on my way to House of Lords with the cab driver where we spoke about NFTs for 30 minutes. Right, right. And I think that's very important. So for people, right. I feel like you don't realize that even if you do an event of like 30 people, mm -hmm. the amount of impact you could have. Right. And I feel like, I feel like being at, at the House of Lords, it, it just felt super crazy because there's so much history over there. Yes. And it almost felt like we are writing something for the future. That's right. And having like the future tech uh, being talked about under yes. the same roof. Um, I think it was absolutely amazing. And I think people should like really look into, I, I feel like because especially we are in a digital world and obviously mm. with NFTs and decentralization, we are just expanding the digital world. Right. But I think having even like an event of like 30, 40 people mm. results in a ripple effect. Right. And you've experienced that with the event right. itself. Like, you know, you had right. way more people than you expected. Right, right. I mean, it'd be like yeah. 100 and I was and trying I to manage like, it all. Yeah, so, and I feel like that, that's, that's something very pivotal, that's very important. I think right. everyone realizes that there are so less of us in the entire world mm. in relation to the whole population that I feel like it's a lot more easier to reach out to people than people think it is. Yeah. Like we've, when we do Twitter spaces with Artstar, we reach out to like notable people and we get their replies almost instantly. Right. And I think that's super amazing. It is. Because that means your innovation, your tech or whatever right. you want to build or right. have like an art gallery or whatever, it isn't as far as you think it is. Yeah. It's just about connecting with the right people. Yes. And these events are like the holy grail of yes. all of this. Absolutely. Uh, if people want to investigate ArtsDAO more, is that limited really to people that are living in Dubai or working in Dubai oh, or is it global oh. and what's the difference for somebody that lives and works in Dubai that gets an ArtDAO membership compared to somebody that lives like in Santa Cruz, California, where I'm from? Uh, what would, I assume that they both have fractional ownership of all the NFTs, so that's yeah. the same. But the people that live in Dubai, they get to go to the parties, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. is there anything else that people should be mindful of if they're going to investigate arts DAO? Well, I think like the fundamental pillar of, of what we are doing is the DAO, right? One of our goals was to bring um, exposure of blue chip NFTs to everyone. I feel yeah. like in, in, in the past, investing and whether it was stocks or equity investments, they weren't that accessible to people. That's right. So that regardless, like I think. I think knowing that, let's say, like there are only 10,000 apes yeah. and you are a fractional owner of an ape, right. that's a pretty cool thing to be a part yes. of. And I feel like that that's regardless of which country that you live from, you can go on OpenSea and buy our NFT and then yeah. you essentially become part of the DAO. Right. Uh, we obviously do s events specifically in Dubai. Mm -hmm. We've done one in, in uh, Lebanon. But funnily enough, we are planning to do small events in London okay. because some of our mem some of our team members actually do it. This is the week to do it. Do. Yeah. This is the week to we, do we it. We are planning um, and then hopefully I'm just figuring out. I mean, you probably do an art style so. meetup. There's probably a couple dozen, maybe several dozen yeah. that are here, right? And we are super excited to be like looking into it because um, our, our one of our copywriters, uh, one of our, like a couple of team members actually are based out of London. And so, right. So we're kind of eventually looking to probably plot this in, in different cities. Okay even in small capacities. And just yes. going back to what I was saying earlier, like like the scalability is, even if you are able to onboard, educate, and bring even like 30, 20 people and stuff, mm. that's not something big. And yeah. So yeah, that's something in the future and we obviously want to focus on like different parts of the world eventually. Mm. Um, as far as for what happens next year, what can you tell us about the festival? I know that dates are not yet decided, but what type of partners are you looking for? Like what type of, uh, maybe you'd have sponsors are you looking for? Are you, if it's a festival, maybe you're looking for musicians or you're looking for artists, maybe you are looking for speakers. So, you know, let this be kind of a first call out. Like if people are interested in being a part of something in Dubai in the Web3 NFT space, what might NFT DXP become and how might people want to lean into that? Yeah. Uh, I feel like our, our, our vision for doing this is really the culture element of it. And I feel like 
whether it's it's projects, builders, um, understand the value of it from like like you know when we are talking about doing a, f a festival, we want people to like really have fun, and if these of and anyone who wants to be a part of that really understands that that we are not doing this for the money. Yeah, we are doing this because we are pioneering the space. Yeah. And as long as those people understand the responsibility that is upon all of us, mm -hmm. and that knowing that we want to do this culture element, that we want this, we want a part of NFT DXV to be exactly like Comic Con, right. where people are dressed as their PFPs, right. right? Where there are people gaming together. And I feel like one of the things the, the younger generation learns a lot about things through the fun element of it. Yeah. And we want to be able to do that. So whether they are sponsor, whether they are um, they're, uh, investors, artists, yeah. collectors, if you really understand the ethos of the space and understand what we're trying to build is a mixture of a music festival mm -hmm. with like a Comic-Con sort of thing, we right. obviously be more than happy to have you on board and build something for the culture. That's awesome. Well, I went to the Comic-Con here in London this last weekend. Uh, I like what Warner Brothers is doing with DC and the hero uh, cards. I like what Marvel's doing with Vivi and, and some others. And so I went there to go check it out. And that would be, that'd be amazing to create a festival like that. And it's certainly those things will be created. So the pioneers are the forerunners that are setting the tone for what could be. I mean, when IP licensing is such a big thing in this space and like people are making movies and they're That's having right. restaurants and things, That's right. it's, it's, it's a no brainer for people for like kids like five years down the line being right. want to dress up as a doodle right. or like a Kleenex and thing just That's like right. we see with DC characters and yes. stuff so I feel like really growing the culture element is probably going to be one of the most important things mm -hmm. in this space. I love that well thanks for sitting down with me I know we had a much longer conversation going over a bunch of details that are private but it's nice to be able to share a bit about who you are who your co-founders are how you developed the Jedi Council to kind of oversee the DAO you have 1500 DAO NFTs but about 640 members because some people are so excited about the DAO they want more than one membership for now um, and there's some great things that are happening and some great things there to come so congratulations on the success mm -hmm. and I expect you'll continue to have great success moving forward thank you so much Absolutely. thank you for having me yes